might as well call it the triple crown of uranium because if anyone's been paying attention we've been on a little run lately in the resource department particularly uranium and it continues today on the equity guru investor roundtable i'm rob in the basement with mr galen who's handling the controls and making dinner at the same time or supper if you prefer the terminology Michelle up in his gold vault. There's a couple bars missing because he invested, did something with Elon Musk. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> and uh, Fabi Lara is in the far corner, always charming, delightful, wonderful to have on board, all the way from Portugal. And it's not that Chris Perry's not charming, delightful. It's just that, you know, come on, let's face it. Um, I just have there, slightly better hair. That's what it nicer is. Nicer hair. Yes, no question about it. Uh, we're talking about standard uranium today. This would be the Belmont Stakes of the Triple Crown of Uranium, the third and final. STND on the Venture Exchange, Jonathan Bay, B-E-Y, is the man in charge. It seems like we hear a lot about this guy. I don't know. It's, I think Fabi pointed out before we got on here that they're busy with the social media over there at, at STND. But Michelle will tell us more to get us started. For sure, Rob. So standard uranium, uh, uh, interesting little uranium uh, junior with a market cap of about 9.5 million and a company that we've talked about in the past just because the, the technical level it was at, but we'll talk about that a bit later because it has actually fallen from that zone that we uh, spoke about in the previous uh, investor roundtable. These guys are based in Saskatchewan, the Athabasca Basin there. You can see where their projects are located there and an uh, interesting map where the major discoveries have been. Their flagship project is the Davidson River Project, which, uh, you know, in terms of closeology, it is a project which is surrounded by big players such as Chemical, Orano, NextGen, Fission Uranium, Fission 3.0, Denison, PurePoint, the list goes on and on there. And you can see uh, the map of the project here. And yes, indeed, it is surrounded by those uh, big boys right there. Um, recent news, uh, they are doing uh, financing a private placement for up to $3.5 million, which will obviously help with uh, further drilling in the future, and that's good for, you know, catalyst, obviously, for the stock. And uh, they are actually currently drilling. They began drilling in the third week of May um, at the uh, flagship Davidson River project. So that's another upcoming catalyst uh, to watch for. Um, by the way, just to clarify for people, you kind of explained it in your conversation there about uh, closeology, right? Which is basically these smaller developers that come along. They're like the remora to the shark. So like they're the the upstart that kind of puts themselves adjacent to a larger developer. Is that fair to say? Yep, I would say that's fair to say. And, you know, we've talked about it on the mining side of things, if 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 we know that that company has something, you're hoping the geology or the, the vein will extend uh, into that zone. And then in the other way, you know, sometimes if it's a gold producer or a producer, uh, if they're looking to acquire, because, you know, we know on the mining side of things, there hasn't been much money on the exploration for from the big majors because of the debt that they had to take on their balance sheet. And perhaps the junior will do that for them, have a project all de-risked, you know, wrapped up with a ribbon, and uh, one of the big boys will buy it up because they need the resources. Nice. You're a fan of closeology, Galen? I am to a point. There are some companies out there that just buy indiscriminately because it's next to, and they don't pay a lot of attention to the actual uh, geology that, that is in the terrain, um, and more or less are just hoping to keep the lights on and to sell shares to people. Um, that's kind of a jaded point of view, I'm sorry. But <laughs> uh, it does bear some um, uh, importance to when you pick a project because typically the way the earth is, the earth is formed, if you get something that's uh, geographically close to another deposit, chances are is that the geology is similar and quite possibly you could end up with a similar deposit or as Michelle said that their strike length may actually come underneath your property and lo and behold you've got yourself some some minerals that you're looking for. Um, standard uranium is in the very early stages of this process uh, and as Michelle mentioned they had just launched a drill program we have yet to see the results from that coming back uh, but they're getting in they're they're actually putting drills in the ground they're not just wandering around and kicking rocks 
They're doing a little more than that. So um, I, I like it, but uh, as Fabi has mentioned on other episodes, yeah. she's more aligned with, with people that are closer to the, to the goal line. And I, I, in this sense, I feel somewhat similar. Yes, there is growth opportunity here, but you're gaining a way higher risk yeah. profile in terms of, you know, the holes coming up dry, right? Yeah. Or the company just fumbling the ball at some point and not being able to take the project through to its completion, yeah. right? So, and not to say that these guys will, it's just that, you know, they're in that place where these are risks. Yeah. And as, as an investor, you have to take that into account. And I'm not typically an investor who yeah. likes to carry a high risk profile. I mean, I will smatter it throughout the portfolio, but basically I want things that I know are going to come to fruition yeah. or that have already performed and are going to continue to perform uh, because I just don't like throwing my money away. <laughs> we say early stage and they say they call themselves in the pre-discovery stage. So. Pre-dis- pre-discovery. pre-discovery. I, I like the euphemism. Keep keep this on is, keep on with the new words, guys. Love it. This is like the resource <laughs> version of used cars or pre-owned vehicles. Yes, it's exactly. Pre-loved. Only, <laughs> there you go. Back, <laughs> only backwards. Uh, Fabi Laura is in um, Portugal. She's a uh, expert in resources, particularly uranium. And here you go. Uh, does this kind of thing make you nervous? Do you kind of try to? What do you want to do here with standard type things? Uh, Standard is very early stage. Um, I happen to to know the company. I'm familiar with the company, familiar with the CEO. And I actually had the chance to sit down with him not too long ago and uh, have a nice lunch and talk Standard. And what intrigued me particularly about this story was that uh, the project that they're drilling right now as we speak um, was actually um, fought over. You know, by people in the industry that shall remain unnamed, um, that often get into lots of fights. Uh, maybe two very large companies in the Athabasca Basin that hate each other. Uh, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. And um, somehow, John got this project right. Um, and I'm just kind of curious to know what people were fighting over, right? Mm-hmm. So from that background story. Um, I'm very curious to see what they find. Um, their previous uh, campaign did not, you know, uh, work out. There were serious logistical problems that, you know, stopped them from actually drilling what they were supposed to drill. I'm hoping that lessons were learned and I'm curious, but at the same time, I'm asking myself, why is the share price, you know, so performing so poorly against other prospects? And so I'm kind I'm kind of uh, having mixed feelings about standard. Let's take a look at the share price, uh, Michelle, with that in mind. Good transition. So on the day we're uh, recording this, the stock did fall 15% and uh, new, making new record lows, new record all time lows at 8 cents there. Uh, on the uh, venture. And if you guys recall, uh, the reason why I was finding this a bit interesting, you guys know as a technical guy, I like to look for these ranges, right? Where the price just ranges in a rectangle, um, essentially after a very long downtrend, because it's usually a sign that maybe the selling pressure is exhausting and we're about to start a new trend, especially when it's very near, you know, new lows or previous, you know, lows, right? So. Those are the kind of setups I like, and we were talking about standard uranium having that type of setup with a uh, range between like 10 cents and 13 and a half cents to the upside. And I remember we were talking about it because they were doing also that drilling program, and we were hoping, hey, maybe if the stock ranges, that might be the catalyst which allows the stock to actually break up. So you know you have this powerful combo of fundamentals and a market structure technical pattern. But um, this is why we wait for breakouts for ranges. Uh, because sometimes it's not signs that the selling pressure is exhausting. And it, as you can see here, we broke below 10 cents and we are now trading at 8 cents, uh, new all time record lows. I did say, you know, uh, um, 15% down day today, about 657,000 shares were traded when the stock has an average volume of about 312,000. So uh, this is one, you know, we're going to have to sort of wait and see what comes up on the initial. Uh, results there and see if that can be some sort of catalyst to get the stock back up again. All right. So you've each got $7,500. Um, is it oversimplistic to say, oh my God, 
great price, what an opportunity, but then the counter to that is, oh gosh, what if they don't come up with anything on this yeah. latest project, I'm screwed. So that's kind of where you're at, I guess, when you're making this decision. And we will begin with a Fabby. 7,500 bucks, 7,500 bucks. Put with. me on the spot. Okay, so because I'm a very curious woman, I'm gonna put two grand. Oh. And this is a lot for me because like, I always lose money on exploration. So maybe <laughs> maybe this won't be different. Maybe it comes from the confidence built in conversing with the boss man, oh, Jonathan no. Bay. It won. can go both ways. <laughs> and work both ways. Galen? Well, you know, I feel kind of bad because in a previous episode, I said I was going to gamble on another company and I'm sitting here going like, well, I don't know if I want to gamble on this one. <laughs> and it's not because it's a bad company. What Fabi said has actually ch <laughs> changed my mind in, in some respect in terms of what I was viewing it as. Not that I was thinking that it was some sort of sham or anything like that. I just thought, you know, the risk was pretty high. But this interesting concept about how this is a hard fought prize. Yeah. That, you know, that somebody else or two other individuals, companies that are rather large were, you know, trying to go at each other's throats to get at it would seem to me that there might be something quite interesting beneath the earth there, or at least potential of that. Um, so I'm torn between two worlds. I'm going to keep them on my radar. Okay. All right. I'm going to be very interested in what's going on. Suddenly I'm cheap. I don't know what's going on. I'm having all these flip-flops and personality but i'm going to hold on to my cash right now and Ooh. wait for results on this first drill program i want to see what how comes out of the ground so how I'm, well do we know i'm going zero at this point how well do we know johnny bay that he wasn't just telling fabi that he you know dropped into this magical situation just to get her to invest well, or to talk or to talk about it yeah see, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> see? i Use don't know John's I'm, gonna gonna call me up on this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you might call I'm me up. I'm gonna trust now. that he had something. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. Yeah. Not that I'm questioning right. integrity. Yeah. Playing devil's advocate, yeah. uh, Mr. Goldman. Yeah, I'm a bit intrigued now too. So I'm I'm gonna drop one k here. Um, obviously, I did really like that range. Uh, we are breaking it below. So if I was gonna say I was gonna buy out on that breakout, I think. Uh, you know, hey, let's speculate a little bit here. And uh, I'm just bullish on uranium as well on that chart that we we didn't talk about on this program, but uh, in a previous uranium investor roundtable. And I think uh, just with a small market cap, and we do see a pop on the uranium side of things, maybe we'll see some strength at least on uh, that rally. So uh, I'm curious. I'll put 1K here. And if, if I do want to add more, it would be because of the, um, the news that comes out from the drill results. But yeah, uh, speculation for me right now. Yes, and as you just brought up, this is the third in the Triple Crown of Uranium uh, roundtables. So if fans of resources in uranium can look at our Brixton Metals roundtable that we did. It's on the site. And also we did a little triple threat with Encore Energy, Fortune Bay, and Searchlight as well, which should be kicking around on equity.guru as well. As often is said, we can't guarantee anything from any past performance with the future performance of a stock, nor can we guarantee anything from what we've said or what we have potentially hypothetically invested. You need to do your own homework and your own research. Uh, it's been a distinct pleasure having Fabi Lara from Portugal, straight from Portugal, on for these three, uh, the Triple Crown of Uranium, and we hope to Thank have you, you on for many, many more. Thank you. For sure. There she is. Uh, Galen, it's always a pleasure to see you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you for the next round table, of course. You got it. And Michelle, keep it down up there because uh, last night you kept me up late with all the racket you partying in the gold vault there with your pals. So take it Pre easy. Pre-Fed party, pre-Federal Reserve party. Was oh my complex. God, it was ridiculous. <laughs> with that, we'll see y'all on the next Equity Guru Investor Roundtable.